have to click continue. Okay, great. Well, uh, thanks everyone for coming and thanks the, the organizers for having me. It's, it's a pleasure to speak here. Um, okay, so let's get started. Um, so let's fix a, fix a prime P. Uh, and the, our object of study throughout the talk will be an E infinity ring, an E infinity ring spectrum. Oops, I guess that's in the wrong place. Uh, e. Um, and what we'll study is uh, the chromatic localizations of E. And by that, what I mean is localizations at either the Morava K theories or uh, the telescopes, so KN or TN. Um, and I'm gonna study this sort of through a, a bit of an oversimplified notion just uh, for the sake of organization. So we can make the definition that E has height N um, if it's TN localization is non-zero, that is it's TN homology. It doesn't vanish, but it's TN plus one homology does vanish. Uh, so this is uh, this turns out to be a pretty well-behaved notion, uh, especially for E infinity rings. So I wanna remark that uh, the notion is equivalent uh, if you use the KNs instead of the TNs, uh, essentially, uh, what, because, because E is a ring and by the no potence theorem. Um, and in fact, a, a theorem of Jeremy Hans uh, implies that uh, for E height n E infinity, um, you actually know exactly which chromatic heights it's supported at. So uh, the, the T zero through T n localizations of E will be non-zero and all the higher ones. Uh, will vanish. So it's um it's a it's a pretty well behaved notion, and we're going to organize uh, our study around that. And so the uh, what we want to oh okay so let me maybe before I go on, go ahead I'll uh, give just a couple of examples. So if I took like connective or non connective complex K theory that would be that would be of height one. Uh, if I took the integers or Q that has no higher chromatic localization, so that's that's height zero. Um, and if, if you wanted me to answer what height FP was, it's probably height minus one because uh, it's rationally zero uh, so in, this, in this scheme. Um, okay, so what I wanna discuss is the interaction of height with algebraic K theory. Um, and that's sort of, that's guided by the Asoni Ragnus uh, redshift philosophy. Uh, so there are, there are precise conjectures, but I want to state a, a simple form that that um, I think was first stated in the work of Barwick, uh, which is that um, for E infinity rings, if E is of height n, uh, then the K theory of E is also an E infinity ring. And that, that should be of height n plus one. Um, and so, so this, uh, these, these redshift conjectures have received a lot of recent work, recent, really amazing work actually. And uh, before I proceed, I wanna just, highlight a few things. Um, so one thing that's been proven uh, by Clausen, Matthew, Nauman, and Noel. So I apologize in advance. I'm highly oversimplifying these results. We should read these wonderful papers. Uh, but one consequence is that if E is of height N, then the K theory of E
we lost the sound. I think the sound isn't Alan. Alan, I think the sound isn't working. Hi, Alan. Yeah, no sound is working. Alan, your sound is not working. All right, how about now? Much better. Okay, yeah, these... I'm not good at technology. My Bluetooth headphones decide they want to connect to my iPad and then they uh, they get muted. Yeah, we, we lost your sound somewhere, uh, Aaron Klaus, Matthew, now Manuel's result. I see. Well, I was I was basically just parroting what I was writing. So I, I don't think too much is lost, but uh, result one says that if E is of height N, then the K theory is of height at most N plus one. And uh, this result of Len, Matthew, Meyer, and Tama says that at height N plus one, um, the K theory depends exactly on only heights N and N plus one of E. Um, and so one remaining question, given these is when or uh, is the K theory of E actually um, of height n plus one? Uh, equivalently, when uh, is then Tn plus one homology of the K theory be actually non-zero. Uh, so there's also been a result of uh, towards this end. And um, so in the, in the process of their, their very strong results on the, the Quillen-Lichtenbaum conjectures, Hahn and Wilson in particular uh, showed that the K-theory of BPN, uh, well, that, that's not an e infinity ring, but the notion still works. Um, the K-theory of BPN is of height n plus one. Um, and, and so in this talk, I wanna discuss uh, another approach to these results and, um, and just uh, a, a bigger family of examples um, where you can show that the K theory is uh, of height n plus one. So that's another uh, proof, or maybe just another approach to showing redshift. Okay, uh, so. Before I get to this, so K theory is maybe uh, is a lot, but there's a there's an example of height shifting for for rings that is uh, much more well understood, and that's um, when this so-called blue shift philosophy or the blue shift phenomenon for Tate cohomology. So I want to start by by discussing this. And uh, this, this arises from work of, of Kuhn, uh, Greenlees, Hovey, uh, and Sadowski's. Um, so, so recall that if I have a spectrum X with a G action, G a finite group, um, then I can make its, its orbits and its, uh, its fixed points and they're connected by uh, an additive norm map whose cofiber is by definition um, the Tate construction for G. Uh, and so in, in a lot of cases for us, we'll, we'll just take X to have the, the trivial action. 
And the th assertion, the theorem of Kuhn, uh, is that if E has height n, uh, then the Tate cohomology of E or, uh, or of CP with coefficients in E um, has height at most n plus one, or sorry, height, height at most n minus one. So it shifts height down. And in fact, for E infinity rings, it's, uh, you can show it's exactly n minus one. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, so, so this is a theorem of Kuhn, um, but if you want to learn about it, there's a great paper by by uh, Claussen and Matthew that gives a proof of this. Um, and this is something uh, a lot more concrete uh, that you can really that you can really touch. Um, and so I want to give uh, adequate examples for this. So let's take the case when uh, E is complex oriented. Complex oriented ring. Um, so in this case, uh, one can really compute this Tate construction and uh, on homotopy groups. And it's given by the following formula. So you take the, you take a Laurent series uh, on one generator uh, over, over the coefficient ring and you quotient uh, by the P, P series of the formal group. So it's like the, uh, the initial place where you have a, a non-vanishing P torsion point for your for your uh, P divisible group. Uh, sorry, I should have said this. Uh, this generator is in degree minus two, and this is as long as the P series is not a zero divisor. Quick question, Alan. So anyway, uh, this, yeah, uh, this is with respect to the trivial action. Yes, 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 the trivial action. If not specified, the trivial action. Thank you. Um, and so this this gives you a this gives a conceptual interpretation first of all uh, for for why there should be height shifting downwards, namely that if I look at the p divisible group of of e, and I I base change myself to to this uh, e tcp, then well this is a height n p divisible group, but it has a non trivial etal part because uh, because because of this non vanishing torsion point. And therefore, its uh, its formal group has to be of of, of lower height. Um, so, I mean, this this is a conceptual interpretation, but we won't come back to it. Uh, I want to think of this more by just calculating on homotopy groups. So, let's take the example where E is is complex K theory, uh, is p-adic K theory, uh, and let's apply the formula. So what that says is that on homotopy groups, that's the, the coefficient ring of K-theory, the joined X, and then we have the multiplicative formal group law. So you're quotienting by, by this equation. Um, and so if you look at this equation, what it, you can rearrange it to say, well, beta, beta X to the P, um, the ones cancel and this, this becomes P times something. So if you invert X, then uh, what this says is that P is a unit. And therefore this ring spectrum is rational. Uh, and so, so that's, that's the first example of, of height shifting. Um, and sort of in general for a complex oriented thing, just by playing with the P series, you can do an argument like this to, to see this for yourself. Uh, you can you can see that Vn minus one um, becomes inverted, uh, at least modulo, so ideal, maybe. Um, okay, uh, so there's an even simpler example of this. So if I took E to be Z, um, then then the homotopy groups of Z TCP by this formula again are Z joined X modulo PX. In other words. A Laurent series over FP, and so here we're sh like shifting from height zero to, to height minus one. Um, okay, and uh, right. So, so the next idea that I want to explain um, comes from 
the, uh, the theory of, of cyclotomic spectra. Uh, or at least that's where I think it comes from. Uh, and I'm going to state it vaguely first and then uh, try to, to slowly uh, make it more precise. And that is the, the blue shift that you see from the Tate construction um, is, is sometimes reversible. Uh, so, so let me try to make that precise. Um, so if I have E, uh, I can regard E as having the trivial S1 action. And so inside S1, we have uh, the trivial action of, of the cyclic group of order P. And what that means is that if I take the sort of the, the fixed points or the, the take construction for this CP, then that has a residual action. Of S1 mod CP, which um, of course is the same as S1. But that, uh, that residual action is now non-trivial and, and potentially interesting. Uh, and to give an idea of what, what mileage you can get out of this, um, I want to consider the, the case when E is Z that we saw above. So as a reminder, we start with, uh, well, we can, we, can, we can consider the map from, from homotopy fixed points to Tate, and on, on homotopy groups, that's just Z adjoin a P torsion class going to that same thing with, oops, I should say power series, but maybe it doesn't matter here. Uh, to, to the same thing with, with X inverted. And um, on pi zero, of course, this thing is this FP. So that's, that's the blue shift that we're seeing. And we can, we can try computing uh, the fixed points for, for part of this residual action. So I want to consider uh, the fixed points for just, just a small part of that residual action, this an extra CP. And now um, by how homotopy fixed points works, this is the same as the fixed points by CP squared. So on homotopy groups, that's adjoining a, a generator Y and modding out by P squared times that generator Y. Um, and that sort of shows you what that extra homotopy fixed points does. It adds this, this Y where X from above is, is PY. So it inserts a, a class Y such that PY is uh, the original P torsion class. And so if you, if you look at the, the spectral sequences, you can see that the same thing must happen for the Tate. And so this Tate uh, is given by the following formula. And now what you see is that pi zero here, um, pi zero here is Z mod P squared. Uh, in fact, you can, you can like identify the spectrum as Z T C P squared. And so when, when you've taken this Tate CP and you, you, you pass from characteristic zero to characteristic zero to characteristic P, you pick up this S1 action. And um, by using that S1 action, you can sort of recover. Uh, you, can, you can get yourself, you can slowly boost yourself back up. And so this is saying that if you just look at the CP inside that S1, um, you can lift up to Z mod P squared. And uh, in fact, um, the homotopy groups uh, of, uh, if, you, if you use the whole S1 residual action, um, you'd get ZP uh, power series X or Laurent series X. Um, and so, so this phenomenon was explained in a really uh, beautiful and concise way um, 
by, by Nicholas and Schulze. Uh, and this is a, this is a variant or a form of, of their, their Tate orbit lemma. So what that lemma says is that if, if I have X abounded below spectrum, Uh, where I can take X to have a S1 action, but I'm just gonna give it the trivial action uh, for, for my purposes. Um, then there's a P complete equivalence. Um, uh, sorry. The P complete equivalence um, so of the form suggested above. So if I take Tate for CP and then uh, homotopy fixed points for the remaining S1 action, that's the same as taking just Tate for the S1 action. Um, so I'll, I'll say a little bit more about this soon. So, but uh, I just want to remark, so if, if E is complex oriented, Uh, this this ETS one thing is I mean it's it's very simple. So its homotopy groups are just a free E star module. And so uh, E is a retract. of ETS one and in particular uh, this this, Kind of Tate doesn't height shift, so that that's that's sort of the same height as E. And so what the what this this Tate orbit lemma of Nicolas Schulze says is that um, if E little e is a connective height n ring, then while the, the CP Tate cohomology of E uh, shifts down is height n minus one. Um, I can take fixed points for the remainder uh, for the remaining S1 action, and that um, gives you little e ts1, which is uh, is back to height n. Um, so I, I know in the remark I said complex oriented. But uh, in, in general, it's still true that this thing is always going to be height n. Um, and uh, before I proceed, I, I do want to state warning: like it's important that that E was connective uh, in this this assertion that I made above. So if I if I looked at KU TCP, we saw above that 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 is rational, uh, and once you're rational. No amount of taking homotopy limits is gonna gonna change that. So uh, rational spectra are closed under under limits. So um, if you tried to do the same thing to K theory, uh, you to, to periodic K theory, um, you'd still be rational. So it's somehow important to to use connected things. Okay, um, so that's that's sort of the end of the the digression on height shifting the other way. Uh, so now I'm ready to, to state um, a result, which is that, whoops, uh, which is about K-theory. So if E is an E infinity ring, of height n at least one, then I claim that the K-theory of E TCP um, has height n. Uh, and this is an example of um, this is an example of redshift because because this is by the above discussion, this is on the inside is height n minus one. Uh, and so the proof of this theorem is a, is an application of the the Tate orbit lemma uh, above. So, I want to sketch the proof, starting with the case, the special case, 
uh, where E is connective. Uh, and to, to remind us that it's connective, in this case, I'll denote E by, by little e. Sure, can, can I ask a question about the state? Um, yes. so, so why does E take CP have um, height N minus one in this context? Or did I just... Um, it's, well, I guess, okay, I guess I haven't shown that, that it's, are you asking why it's non-zero at height n minus one? Uh, I'm asking why it's, is it, uh, well, sorry, is the claim that it's zero in higher heights or? Yeah, the, well, the claim is it's zero in higher heights at least, um, but I think it's also non-zero at height n minus one by, by theorem that appears in your paper. But I guess I'm confused because E is not, E is not already, uh, E is not already TN local. So is it is it clear that if you have something of height n, then it's CP theta's height n minus one without more hypothesis? Ah, uh, uh, sorry. Let's see. I see. So maybe I shouldn't claim that. I think the, the, the statement is still fine, but um, I think I'm, I'm going to not claim that really actually claim that the, the middle is height n minus one and just say that if, how about if, if E is uh, TN local, uh, then, then, then the middle thing is, is height n minus one. Yeah, thanks. Sorry. Um, all right. So let's, uh, yeah, let's, con let's consider the special case when, uh, when E is connective. Um, so in this case, uh, there's going to be one ingredient that I want to recall. So recall that uh, if E is a, an E infinity ring, I can consider it's THH. Um, and the THH is the, the S1 tensor, or it's S1 tensor with A uh, in the world of E infinity rings. So it's the co-limit over S1, um, the, the constant diagram at A. Uh, and therefore, uh, it has a universal mapping property, which is that if B uh, is an E infinity ring with S1 action, um, then there's, a, there's, an, there's an equivalence of E infinity maps from A to B with S1 equivariant E infinity maps from the THH of A uh, to B. Um, so, so in pictures, that means that if I have a map from A to B and B is separately equipped with an S1 action, uh, then that map extends canonically to, uh, to an S1 equivariant map from the THH. Uh, so, so we're gonna use this fact. Okay, so given this, let's consider uh, the following E infinity ring map. So the K theory of little ETCP maps via the trace map to the THH of ETCP uh, HS1. So this is the this is the, the Dennis trace. Or maybe it's yeah, the the trace to, to negative cyclic homology. And now um, I want to apply the the this fact about THH in the following case. So little ETCP has the identity map to itself, uh, and separately ETCP is equipped with this. Okay, thanks. Good Willie Jones trace. Thanks, Dennis. <laughs> um, so separately, ETCP is equipped with uh, this interesting S1 action, uh, this residual one, and therefore, one obtains an extension uh, to THH, which is S1 equivariant. And so this map is not the augmentation, um, and somehow it uses the, the action interesting action. 
And so that means that, that we obtain a map on homotopy fixed points by S1 to uh, ETCP HS1, which we saw um, is just ETS1. And uh, so, um, and this is an E infinity ring map. So it follows that uh, ETS1 is a module uh, over the K theory of little ETCP. And um, any module over the zero ring is zero. So uh, if, since E is assumed to be height N, um, if, if it's, if ETS1 is sort of non-zero at height N, then uh, this K theory must also be. Uh, so, 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 sorry, let me, let me state, maybe, let me just clarify what, what I mean, what I'm using. So the assertion is that if R to R prime is a map of, of E infinity rings, then the height of R is, uh, is at least the height of R prime because whenever, whenever R vanishes, R prime must also vanish because they, uh, there's, a, there's a ring map between them. Oh, I didn't make a statement, did I? This is non-zero. Uh, so this this proves the the proposition in or the theorem in the case that um, that E is connective. Uh, but in fact, uh, the the general case follows um, by this work of uh, Land, Meyer, Matthew, and and Tama. Uh, so let me remind you. So theorem of theirs. Is that hmm, maybe I'll use N. Uh, TN local K theory of a ring uh, is the same as the TN local K theory of um, the localization at heights n and n minus one of that ring. And therefore, if so, for general E, which is not assumed to be connective, um, we can consider the connective cover. And uh, I want to assert that on Tate constructions, this map uh, is a TN which TN minus one equivalence. And so by their theorem, um, from the perspective of KN lo or, uh, TN local K theory, uh, these will be the same. So this, this reduces to the case uh, which we, we did above. Sorry, so there's a question in the chat. Ah, but you should. Um, yes, if I, I I think I think so because uh by by this theorem of um Claussen. Yeah. So I was just that. So doesn't that mean that um. In the statement, it, it is okay to just say that ETCP has height n minus one. Sorry, sorry. Well, I guess why I think the, the fact that ETHCP has height at least n minus one is, I think it's really is Jeremy Hans theorem. Uh, but I, I think what I was, well, so I think what was not clear to me is why, um, yeah, I guess why the TN localization of ETHCP is zero. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, so for the remainder um, of the talk, I want to discuss some consequences of, of this argument. Um, 
Maybe I need to draw a line. This doesn't look good. Applications. All right. So um, by the theorem, and uh, so we saw before that if you have a ring map, then, um, well, OK. <laughs> So by the theorem, um, if A is an E infinity ring of height n minus one, and we find a map from A to E TCP for a height n ring E, um, then we can conclude that K theory of A has height n. So this uh, this follows from this 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 remark um, uh, over here. Oops, this remark up above here. Uh, and so so what we should be trying to do is map things into tates of other things, I guess. Um, so there's a there's a simple or there's a there's an amusing first thing you could do. So uh, so note that one thing that maps into ETCP is E itself. So the Tn minus one localization of E maps to the, the Tn minus one localization of ETCP. Uh, and so as a result, um, if E is a is a height n E infinity ring, um, then the K theory of the Tn minus one localization of E is also height n. Uh, and so this this sort of says that if if your if your ring if your height n minus one ring extends to a height n ring then then you know this uh, this kind of redshift behavior. Okay, um, let's give a another so another application of results which was advertised is that uh, it says something about Morava E theories. So let E n be a Lubin Tate theory. Of height at least one. Um, then I claim that the K theory uh, has height n plus one. Um, and so the idea here uh, is that by the above discussion, it's it would suffice to produce a ring map from uh, EN to uh, the Tate construction on a, on a E theory of a height um, N plus one. And so it doesn't really have to be an E theory, but for concreteness, let's, let's say that. Uh, and in fact, it suffices to prove a, uh, that there's a there map to the, to the localization. Um, and one might be encouraged uh, to do something like that because of this, because of the work of uh, Gorse, Hopkins, Miller, and, and Lurie, which tells you that it's easy to map E, uh, En, the Lubin Tate theories, into Kn local E infinity rings. So I want to state that result. So so if E is a Lubin Tate theory corresponding uh, to a perfect field and a formal group of height n, uh, and I have an infinity ring R, which is Kn local, two periodic complex orientable. Then I can describe uh, the the space of E infinity ring maps from E n to R. And that space um, happens to be a set, which is in bijection with uh, maps in a certain one category of formal groups from G0 uh, to the the um, the formal group over uh, the residue field of of R. So 
let me write pi zero of r mod i n, where here i n is, is the Landweber ideal generated by p through v n minus one, and uh, the formal group, which is the reduction of the, the formal group of r. Uh, so, so a map in this category is a, is a ring map from between the two rings and uh, an isomorphism, which exhibits the formal group on the target as a uh, extended from the from the source. Uh, so this tells you how one could build the infinity ring maps out of Morava E theory. Um, and so it it what this says is it, it suffices to to understand. Uh, the formal group on the ring R, which is the KN localization of EN plus one TCP. Um, but it turns out that the, the formal group on this might be, might be a little bit complicated. So you cannot quite make uh, the map, which I'll label star. Um, but I want to thank Akil for explaining to me what, what you can do. So you can up to uh, a tall extension. So I'm going to put this in quotes because I don't want to make super precise what I mean. But the idea is that, I mean, any two formal groups um, over a separately closed field are, are isomorphic. Uh, so, so up to a tall extension, sort of this, this formal group is simple or is extended from a perfect field. And uh, so what one can do is you can apply uh, the results of, of Clausen, Matthew, Nauman, and Noel, which uh, assert that TN local K theory satisfies a tall descent. Um, and uh, so I claim if you, uh, with that in additional ingredient, um, while you can't make a map, you can still show that the, the K theory of, of the Morava E theory is non-vanishing at height n, uh, n plus one. N plus one. Um, and so, uh, okay, so that's, that's, that's all I wanted to say about the proof. And, um, so this gives, um, this gives another approach to the, uh, the case of BPN. So it's, it's more or less equivalent to knowing something like this for BPN, I think. Um, all right. Uh, so I've got one final example. And um, for this example, I want to highlight that there's sort of this, uh, this approach doesn't, it, it's sort of effective in a way, and, and it gives you a map that, that witnesses the redshift. So it gives you a map between the K theory and, and something of a, of a higher height. Uh, and I want to illustrate this by, by the following, by, by thinking about the following theorem. Um, so let K be a field uh, in which p is non-zero. Uh, then I claim that one can consider the iterated k-theory of k. So this is a, and I claim that this ring has right n. Uh, so, for example, um, if, if k was an algebraically closed field uh, and n was 1, uh, then the k theory of k would be ku, which has height 1. So let me sketch uh, how, how you, you do this with these ideas. Um, so I want to just illustrate it in the case where k is q and uh, n is 2. Um, so here, 
uh, take choose e2 to be a height two move in take theory. And set little e2 to be its connective cover. Uh, and I want to consider the following object. I want to consider the T2 local iterated K theory of a, of a carefully chosen ring. Uh, so, so that ring is going to be, you take little E2, do the take construction, the connective cover, and then you do the take construction again. And so to avoid me having to say that again, let's let that ring be R. Uh, so this, this object has two features. So the first is that by uh, the work of Land, Matthew, Meyer, and Tama, um, this only depends on uh, a certain part of R. So the T2 localization of K of K of R is the same as I put T2 and a T1 in the middle. Uh, but this in turn is the same as if I just, if I took T2, T1, and T0 of R. Um, but E2 has height n, or not n, 2, has height 2. Uh, so R, which involves applying uh, two Tate constructions, has height zero. And it follows that uh, it's T2 and T1 localizations that vanish. And so that means that this thing that I have on the inside is rational. So it's the, it's the same thing as just applying T0 localization. And so this is rational. Um, and so it's a rational E infinity ring. So in particular, it receives a map from Q. And thus the, the iterated K theory of, of Q maps in. Uh, on the other hand, we can produce a map out of this object uh, by a similar means from before. So if I have the twofold iterated K theory of R, that maps to the iterated KHH of R, HS1 cross S1. Um, which by the by the before trick with, with THH, that's mapping to the, the following gadget. So it's it's R uh, H S1 cross S1, where now now this is the the interesting S1 action, it's the residual one. Um, and because because the thing on the very inside this is connective. That's the same thing as uh, I can I can take one of the TCPs on the HS ones and make it a, a TS one. Uh, so let me clarify that this is an S one mod CP. These two are interacting, uh, but since the thing on the inside is is complex oriented. Um, This object has as a retract has this um, or yeah has this uh, which maps to e two t s one. And therefore, uh, therefore, it's it's height 
uh, two. And so since we've mapped uh, the iterated K theory of Q to a height two ring, uh, it must have height two as well, or height at least two. And um, by, the, by the before results, it's uh, the quoted results, it's, it's of height two. Um, and so the, the last remark I wanna make about this is that in fact, it's producing a, a map that witnesses, um, that witnesses this being height two. And so for example, um, if, I, if I do an analogous construction for uh, an algebraically closed field, uh, so I have to take a slightly bigger E theory, but I can still do this. And what it, the result is that it gives you a comparison map from the K theory of little k u uh, to elliptic cohomology. And this, this K theory of KU was studied by, by uh, in work of Bass, Dundas, Richter, and Rognes, um, where they showed that it's related uh, to the geometric theory of virtual uh, two vector bundles. Um, so, so I, I don't want to say say more about this right now. So I'll stop here. Okay. Well, let's let's thank Alan. <laughs>
I mean, is constructing these Marathi E theories part of the program or have these been constructed already? Um, uh, I think for any perfect field uh, and formal group over the perfect field. Um, oh, okay. I yeah. thought there was something perfectoid going on here, but maybe I. Uh, I I'm just, I'm starting with um, a perfect field. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Do you think that one could uh, understand uh, the maps that you're producing uh, in order to compare heights? Uh, like, um, do you think that one could use character maps to, like, the character maps in, like, HKR uh, to, like, compare heights? Um, something like that, yeah. I, I, I don't know if uh, I it's just like, a, a, the, the only reason why I mentioned it is because, like, um, I know I've been th thinking about like um, I don't know, like you mentioned like e to the TCP and stuff, and like that sort of like um, the receptacle for um, yeah. like for like the best character for the best ring uh, in order to get a character map. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I don't know. So just bringing some guys. It's, it's definitely, uh, yeah, it feels like uh, there should be something, but I, I, unfortunately, I don't have a, have a precise statement for you along these lines. Yeah. I guess yes. one problem with this Hopkins, Kuhn, Ravenel character theory would be to, okay, so you get good maps out of classifying spaces of finite groups, but it's they're somehow not large enough to approximate the sources of these. So the K theory of, of ring spec are a little harder to approximate by for those, uh, at least the way. Some, some people have thought about it in the past. Can I ask, I mean, it looks like now, you, for the, in the case of the infinity rings, you seem to have a very good, nice, very you know, there seem to be very strong results. But the, the Han uh, Wilson example with the brown Peters spectra is not E infinity, it's, it's usually E3. And uh, there are examples, for example, if you look at connective Morava K1, so the atom sum and mod P. Yeah. Um, Sonia and I calculated that its algebraic K theory is, is V2 periodic even if by, by this kind of measure, you know, Morava K1 is somehow type minus one. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's more that it's, it's somehow the, it's, it's probably more just uh, that it's the wrong measure. It's probably wrong to say that uh, Morava K1 is height minus one. No, yeah, I, I don't, I, I think this, this notion is not very good if you're not in the infinity room. So, so, the, so, the, uh, so it might be interesting to, uh, to see how, you know, what happens when you move into the non-commutative situation but um, yeah definitely and just just i mean for morava k theories uh in general i i don't know how, how to how to reproduce uh, or how, how to reproduce your result with um in height one and uh to show this kind of statement in general yeah any more questions If not, let's uh, let's thank Alan again.